Hi everybody, welcome to the Search Buzz video recap. My name again is Barry Schwartz and this is the search news we covered over at the Surgeons Roundtable at scroundtable.com. Today is Friday, April 26th and here's what we have to talk to you about. One, Google dropped their instant previews. Um, so if you remember going to Google search, do a search for something, there would be this little arrow on the right hand side of the snippet, you click on it, it would bring up this uh, preview of the page that is no longer available. Google launched it about three years ago, made a big deal about how it increases user satisfaction about, searcher satisfaction about 5%, um, yada, yada, yada. Now it's gone, why? Google told us because of low usage. So now um, you'll see um, pretty much a green arrow next to the URL. You click on it, that's where you'll get the cached um, link, that's where you'll get the um, similar link, and also if you're logged in, you'll get a share link to share it on Google+. Um, Google so also Google relate, removed a search option called related searches um, that used to be in the search options drop down menu um, Google removed that as well because users don't use it low usage um, third thing Google's author snippet the author snippet um, in the search results actually changed they removed the more by link more by author link um, and they changed the, the behavior of actual the current links right now so now when you click on a person's face um, or their name, it will take you to more articles about that person in the search results as opposed to taking you to the Google Plus profile, which you used to do in the past. Uh, and when you click on the number of circles that author has, then it will take you to the Google Plus profile. Google has manually penalized Mozilla. It was a big thing. Um, it, we thought it was a big thing, but it actually wasn't. Uh, Matt Cutts came in later and said, of the of the, I think, what, uh, 22 million or billion pages that the site has, um, only one of the pages was actually penalized. So you got this Google penalty notification um, of, of user, gen it was specifically user generated content spam penalty. Um, it didn't tell them which page, but it was actually, Matt Cutts went in later and said, hey, it's this one specific page. Um, and it's a very granular penalty, obviously, one page out of 22 million. Um, that being said, the reason that page had a penalty because of user-generated spam, but how much user-generated spam? 12 megabytes of, of, of 22,000 or so comments of user-generated spam. So they cleaned it up, they fixed it, submitted a reconsideration request, and all was good. Speaking about user-generated spam, there was this blogger who is a giveaway blogger, um, and they specifically talked about how an SEO there said the reason their site's not doing well on Google is because they have too, much, too many poor quality comments. Um, so yes, as you saw with Mozilla, you could get a user-generated content spam penalty, but it has to be really, really egregious. A ton of spam, 12 megabytes, 22,000 comments on one page for it actually to make an impact. I asked John Mueller specifically about this, and he said generally the length of the comments would have no bearing on if a page would have a manual or algorithmic penalty. And I even posted a video when I asked John Mueller this question and he responded. So if you actually want to take a look at that and see how Google considers user-generated content spam um, and how bad it has to be, take a look at April 22nd at SEOroundtable.com and also, also look at those Mozilla posts so you can see more information about that. Um, interesting enough, um, Google sent out a Webmaster Tools notification yeah, last night, I got I think three or four, so I'm sure like thousands, probably hundreds of thousands that went out to webmasters, specifically saying Googlebot cannot access my website. It wasn't my specific website, it was one of my clients, but it seems like Google sent this out to a lot, a lot of webmasters. Matt Cutts said, it seems strange, it's probably an issue on our side, so you, I think you could probably can ignore that. John Mueller of Google came in and said, please give me examples so we can just double, double check and verify that. Um, we have a post about this morning. If you are nervous about it, take a look at it, join the thread, add your information, and Google will check it out for you. Um, Google will send, so you know Matt Cutts actually said this, Google will send notifications to both, to the, to both if you have verified the www and non-www, Google will send you notifications to both uh, verified accounts just in case. They don't want to miss anything, so they'll often do that generally because the www and the non-www are the same. Technically they're not, but generally they, they are in practice. Google has created um, an iOS app to help you manage your Google Places listings. The app, I think, has been removed, but it was live. The question is why? Why are they doing this? They have so many different ways of managing your listings. It's confusing for users. Adding another one at this point is probably not a great idea since they have so many bugs. Focus on your bugs, fix the bugs, and obviously then add new features. 
easier said than done for, for engineers. Uh, they love programming new things and not maintaining old things. Um, so I don't blame them per se, but that's what the customers feel. Google AdWords has finally added support, um, a support feature for screen sharing. So now if you have a problem, you can share your screen with a Google AdWords rep. They could walk you through the issue um, on the screen and talk you through it and actually see what you're seeing. Um, this is a new feature that we actually launched this week. Um, and I have detailed instructions on how to use it uh, today at April 26th at seroundtable.com. Uh, 24th, today's the 26th, two days ago, the, on the 24th was the Penguin, Google Penguin's update birthday. It was the one year birthday of Google Penguin update. Um, I go through it, obviously, it's not something to be laughed about for a lot of SEOs and webmasters. Um, obviously, there are a lot of SEOs and webmasters, a lot of SEOs who are benefiting in front of from doing a lot of SEO work for clients, but at the same time, it's not something to laugh about for somebody who actually got hurt by this. Um, their business has probably collapsed. Anyway, I did a poll asking you, did you recover? Because I did a poll several months ago asking if you covered and 65% of SEOs said they were impacted. Um, and 94% of those said they did not fully recover. So now I have a new poll. I have about 350 responses so far. Um, and it seems to be a little bit more did recover. Um, I guess 10% said they actually fully recovered, but I'll get more details about that as time goes on. If you haven't taken the poll, go to April 24th at seroundtable.com and take the happy birthday penguin poll. Um, some sad news, Blue Glass. It was basically, I called it an SEO firm made up of giants. Gre uh, unbelievable names in the SEO world came together, merged their companies, and made this one big company. Blue Glass company seems to be collapsing. The USA company seems to be collapsing, not the European version, which is a completely different company. The conference seems to be not going to be happening. It seems like that way. It seems like Greg Bozer, who was the president, is really, really upset with how it's being handled by the top level executives as well in the company. Um, Chris Winfield posted a personal thought about it, not really revealing too much information, but basically telling what people are going through. Patrick Price, who's part of the EU company, totally different company, talked about what he's trying to do. Um, so there's lots of things going on. Lauren Baker hasn't really said anything, and he's obviously a fellow blogger of mine, and we both had our blogs early on in the day, so I can't imagine what they're going through. I, I know they will come out of this and be stronger from it, but I certainly hope they handle this well. The clients hopefully won't get screwed too bad. The conference people probably hopefully won't get in trouble too much uh, from this. And I hope everybody comes out of this uh, a little bit stronger and hopefully happier at the end, but uh, it is a shame to see. Um, now, on a happier note, Google had some Earth Day logos. Uh, we have Earth, Lo Earth Day logos this, I think it's Monday. Um, this Monday, so Google had an animated Earth Day logo, uh, which I have a picture of. YouTube had a logo, Bing had a logo, Ask.com, we had a logo. Sadly, because of the earthquakes in the China, China region, Baidu and Sogua, I don't even pronounce that, I'm sorry, um, had special logos for the earthquake, not Earth Day, um, and I hope um, all our readers are safe over there. Finally, Google had a logo yesterday for Ella Fitzgerald. Um, she's known as the Queen of Jazz. Um, she was born uh, the, uh, you know, on that date um, uh, yesterday in 1917 in Newport News, Virginia. Uh, and she lived 79 years. She was really changed how, um, I guess, that world of jazz and singing. She was an excellent vocalist. Anyway, thanks so much for listening to the Search Buzz video recap. My name again is Barry Schwartz, and that's the news we covered over at the Search and Roundtable. Today again is April 26th, Friday. Everyone have a great weekend, and I'll see you guys next. Bye.